Welcome to my first hitting tips video of the year. I want to keep this intro short, but if you guys do enjoy the video, make sure you guys give it a thumbs up. If you have any unanswered questions from this video, please leave a comment down below and I'll get to that and I'll answer it to the best of my abilities. But without any further ado, let's get into the video and show you guys how to hit. We're going to start straight off the bat with my settings. We start out with the hitting with the hitting view which is strike zone again there's a bunch of different views you can use and a lot of this is preference but a lot of the top tier players in this game we all use strike zone depending again you can use any strike zone you want you can use offset you can use high i know a lot of people use strike zone high for me personally i see the ball best using strike zone view again just give it a try and try it it's just kind of the easiest way to see the ball in my opinion if you like strike zone high though use strike zone high for in play view i get this question asked maybe 30 times a stream and bring it up the stream if you guys are not following us on twitch it is twitch.tv forward slash samuel underscore adams you can ask me any questions there i talk to the chat all the time so make sure you guys are following us over on twitch back to the video we got in play view on high a lot of people use dynamic and it's pretty cool for the no doubt homers but the reason why i use in play view on high specifically is if i hit a line drive or like a pop fly over an outfielder's head it's a lot easier to read the ball when the in play view is on high over any other view you have medium you have dynamic you have retro broadcast again i would really highly advise you guys to use it on high again it's just for those line drives either in the gap or just barely over an outfielder's head you're you're able to way easier see it if it's going to be caught or not when the view is on high so i do recommend you put this on high for hitter interface there's a couple of different ones you have zone directional pure analog but the only competitive setting is zone it's where you move your pci around and you control your hitter instead of having to control the computer control your hitter by you just pressing x if you're going to play this game at any competitive level you need to use zone and then for input type just use buttons so you just basically are moving your PCI around with the left stick and you're pressing X to hit. The last thing we're to go over in our settings is the plate coverage indicator and that's the PCI. You turn that on high and this is my PCI settings. Another question I get a ton. I only use the three diamonds and I'll go into why I use the three diamonds right when we get into hitting. Again, a lot of this is just preference. If you like to have your wedge on you can have your wedge on if you like the color to be red you can use red i just specifically feel like i see the ball better when i just have the diamonds and i have it on white with the 80 percent transparency again it's all preference you use what you are comfortable using but if you want to try this pci out in my opinion it's the best pci in the game now that we got all the settings out of the way let's go into hitting and the first thing i'm going to talk about is my pci so what I mean by the three diamonds is right here. You see the three white diamonds in the middle of the screen. That is your PCI. So I have zone hitting on and I have my PCI on. The reason why I like this PCI the best is because I feel like I can see the ball better. That is literally it. I just feel like I can see the ball better. And something I do is I keep my PCI not in the middle, but I put it right here. And the reason why I put it up and in like that, because I'm always sitting in on the fastballs, right? So I'm looking for fastball right from the jump right here. And if it's an off-speed pitch, I can see it faster. Again, that's the reason why I use this PCI, only because I can see the ball better. And that's why it's all preference. If you think there's a better PCI for you, you can use that PCI. But I just really enjoy seeing the three diamonds because again, I can see the ball better. And I feel like it gives me a smaller spot on the screen to, to look and try to square up a baseball. That's the reason why I use that PCI. Next, I want to go over in more detail why I keep my PCI up and in. So let's do that. So again, I keep it in because I'm always sitting on the fastball. And in my opinion, at the higher levels, the hardest pitch to hit is that fastball up and in. A lot of people are always telling me, Adam, how do you keep up with the fastball specifically at the higher levels? And that the way I do it is as simple as I'm sitting on that pitch, right? I'm looking up and in or anywhere up in the zone at all times. So I'm just looking for fastball, looking for fastball, and I see it low and I'm able to take off, right? It's all about recognizing that pitch, right? 
So again, I'm sitting up and in, and I'm looking for that heater all the way. When I'm able to locate it, you sit back, because I saw, I read the pitch perfectly, you sit back and you drive it the other way. Again, obviously I made that look a little easier than it actually is. It's a ton of practice, a ton of reps. The more you see the ball, the more you hit, right? It's just, that's the best way. But my best tip at reading the ball is this, right? I currently have the gameplay on All-Star. And the first thing I want you to do is I don't even want you to worry about hitting. I want you to grab your PCI, right? And do this. You keep it up and in, and I don't want you to hit. I want you to move your PCI to the ball, right? So you, I'm recognizing, I saw that fastball. You keep your PCI there. You just read the ball over and over and over again. You do this about 10 minutes a day, and I promise you, you'll be able to get better at hitting. It's all about recognizing pitches as fast as possible, right? That's the key to hitting. If you can notice a slider right away, you're gonna be able to hit that slider more times than not. And the key to recognizing is just practice, practice, practice. There's no, there's really no easier tips than that, right? There's no special tip where it could be like, if you do this, you can hit home runs nonstop. It's all reps. And I know maybe you guys don't wanna hear that because not everyone has the time be like okay i'm gonna go to practice for 10 minutes and i'm gonna do this but i'm telling you all the streamers you have you have mcgunsky you have your friend kyle you have all these you have pitching rebel right all these guys are top players why are they top players they've been playing the game for eight nine years now right so they all have those reps and they've all done this before so again this is what i want you to do start out at the lowest level possible if you can't hit an all-star put it on veteran if you can't hit on veteran put it on a rookie Wherever your level is, where you can make it in ranked seasons, or you think you can see the ball, put it on that level. We start an all-star, right? Start an all-star, and I just want to read the ball. You sit here, you don't hit, you don't press X, you don't want to do both things at once, you just read the ball and you get your PCI there. When you start getting comfortable with, okay, I'm reading the ball perfectly, I can see any pitch out of DeGrom's hand, that's when you start hitting, and again, if he throws a dot, he throws a dot. You're gonna be early. Not every swing is gonna be perfect. But as, as long as you can read that pitch well, okay, I saw that was a fastball all the way, squared it up, we hit a home run. All-star, we're good. We're good with all-star. Then what you're gonna do is move it to Hall of Fame. You apply your changes and you keep your PCI up and in, right? You're sitting on that fastball. I'm not swinging here, right? I'm not swinging, I'm looking, and I see it's a fastball, right? Because I'm able to recognize that from practice i think this is a huge huge thing that not a lot of people do a lot of people try to put both together right they try to put their pci and they try to press x but if you can just simple it down just dumb it down to the easiest thing possible right just use your pci try to get it there and again once you're comfortable and you're like okay i'm getting my pci and i'm able to recognize slider i'm able to recognize change up i'm able to recognize that big old looping curveball then you start trying to hit it. And when you when you put both of them together, you're like, okay, I can move up to the next level, right? It's that simple. Again, it's not simple. It's not. Forget I said that. It's tough. But it's just all reps, reps, reps. Another huge thing when it comes to hitting is your approach, right? You can't just go up there and swing the bat because if a pitcher recognizes that you're swinging at every single pitch, he's just going to be throwing nonstop balls and you're going to be striking out every single time. So in this situation, I have a guy at third with one out. All I want to do is try to lift the ball and score that runner. If I can get a hit, great. If I had a home run, amazing. But all I'm trying to do in this situation is look for a pitch up in the zone and crush it. We have one out, guy at third. If I can see any ball I can handle, I'm going to swing at it. If not, we're not going to chase it. That pitch was right down the middle, right? There's a slider right there. I saw it perfectly. We got a perfect, perfect. That's all we're trying to do. So you need an approach, right? If you have if you have a leadoff guy, right? You have your leadoff hitter, OO count. He's super fast. You want to get that guy on. You're not the best hitter. Be as patient as possible. You don't you have three strikes to work with, right? Go down 0 and 2. Go to 2 and 2 counts. Be patient. Wait for your pitch. You don't have to swing at every single pitch. One thing I was completely forgot to talk about is the new practice settings in this year's game. This is one of the best things they've done, and I haven't really heard a lot of people talk about it. It's where you can basically pitch any pitcher you want, you can pick any hitter you want, 
You can pick the pitches you're having trouble with and then have them in that zone. Say I am having trouble hitting fastballs inside. I'm going to unselect all these pitches, right? So now if I go into practice, I'm going to get a fastball anywhere in the zone. But say you're having trouble with only inside fastballs, right? You go to here where it's the nine circles and you select the three inner circles. You see it says all inside zones, all high zones, all outside zones, and then all low zones, right? I'm having trouble hitting the inside fastball. You select all three of these, and now once I go into practice mode, you got it says at the bottom, start practice, so you just press your start button. All they're gonna throw me are inside fastballs. This is an incredible addition to this year's game, right? Because again, if you're having trouble hitting the sinker, go into practice mode, select this, and just put inside sinkers and hit sinkers over and over and over and over again. If you're having trouble, let's go back to the hitting. If you're having trouble with sinker, let's go to a guy who has, let's go to, no, he doesn't have it. Who has a sinker and a cutter? Do any of these guys have sinker and cutter? Probably not, right? Because I'm looking for a guy with a sinker and a cutter. Finally, Corbin Burns, here we go. Sinker, cutter. I'm gonna go inside, 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 outside, outside, outside. That's, you're gonna see so many people, sinkers inside, cutters outside. Cutters inside, sinkers outside, to any of your hitters. If you're trying to get better, just go into practice mode, put inside and outside zone, so now you know you're either gonna get the sinkers inside or the cutters inside, the sinkers outside and the cutters outside. You go into it and you just try to read that and practice over and over and over again until you're comfortable to bring your hitting online. There we go. That's, I mean, that's an absolute dot. And that's what they're going to throw in this mode. And that's good because now with pinpoint pitching, a lot of guys or a lot of online players are going to be locating 95% of the pitches that you're going to be facing, right? So you got to, you, you got to learn how to hit this pitching and what better way than using this setting. I have not seen a lot of people talk about that setting. And this is just an incredible addition to this year's game because you can practice any weak points you have. Right, we're just looking for the sinker cutter. There we go, we got the sinker inside. I didn't get all of it, but I got enough of it to find a gap. Again, this is just something that you guys need to use. If you guys have any problems at all, use this, right? Use this. I hear someone, right, I asked, I put a tweet out about, give me any questions you have to answer in my hitting tips video. And one of the main questions was, how do I not drop my PCI, right? So let's do it, let's go back to DeGrom right back to the ground only fastballs and put the fastballs in the low zone right put your fastball in the low zone and start your pci high right i'm still starting here i'm trying to now not drop my pci how do i do it all practice it's, there's no simple solution to this it's all reps 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 you continuously try to face these fastballs low in the zone right and you try to not see i dropped my pci there that was a terrible swing so we popped it up to the right fielder this is just all see the ball, hit the ball, and there's no simple solution other than the more reps you have, the better you'll get at hitting these lower pitches and not dropping your PCI. Last but not least, I wanna talk about what I'm looking at when the pitcher is about to release the ball. A lot of you guys ask this question, and this is one answer. I look right at the hand. I'm not looking at the body. I'm not looking anywhere else. I'm looking where the pitcher is gonna release it. So this pitch, or this is different with every pitcher, DeGrom release is about right here. So I'm looking right here. I'm looking at the hand. So I'm just looking right where he's about to release the ball every single time. And again, there's I don't think there's a better way, right? When you're hitting in real life, you're looking at the pitcher's arm. You're not looking at his feet. You're not looking at his chest. You're looking right at his arm because that's the best place and that's where he's releasing the ball. So again, just look at the pitcher's arm or look at the pitcher's hand and you're able to tell what pitch is gonna come. Again, the more reps you're gonna take. But that's gonna be the end of the video. If you guys enjoyed that video, make sure you guys are hitting that subscribe button. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up. If I forgot to answer any of your comments, just leave it down below and I'll get to it. And as always, I would appreciate it if you guys can turn on those notification bells so you get notified when every video is live. And until next time, I love you guys. I appreciate you guys and I'm out.